The fourth learning objective in session 12 is uh, variability of returns. What can statistics tell us about uh, some of these returns and some of these financial instruments, and can we use statistics to make good financial decisions? Uh, so we can take all of the returns captured by Ibbotson and Sinkfeld and put them into what I, we will call a histogram or a frequency distribution. How frequently do these same returns occur and under uh, bands like uh, 10 to 10 0 to 10%, 10 to 20%, 20 to 30%, 30 to 40%, and so on. And then we can go negative on those 0 to minus 10, minus 10 to minus 20, and so on, and just create a histogram of returns. So here we see one for large company stocks and the frequency with which these um, returns fall into these buckets. I, I like to call this a bucket diagram or histogram. Uh, statistically, where do these returns uh, fall? So you can create a histogram for each of these instruments that they've studied and see where exactly um, the returns fall. Uh, from that, we can calculate all kinds of statistics, and uh, some of the more popular ones are the variance and standard deviation, so we're going to go through how to do that. Uh, variance is uh, simply the average square difference between the actual return and the average return, and the um, standard deviation is the square root of the variance, positive square root of the variance. So some key ideas here, the greater the variance, the greater the standard deviation, the greater the volatility of the instrument, and high volatility increases the chance that a year's return will be far different than the average return. Uh, you can see T-bills don't vary very much. So that you would think they would have a very small standard deviation, small variance. Uh, small company stocks, obviously, are the riskiest instrument we've studied, and they will have the higher standard deviation values. Let's look at how to calculate standard deviation and uh, variance. And when we do this, we can repeat this for any instrument uh, over any sub-segment of years. Uh, here's an example, SuperTech and HyperDrive. The SuperTech uh, Hypertech, hyperdrive companies have the following returns uh, in the last four years. So you just see what the numbers are, what's the average return, uh, what is the variance, what's standard deviation, which one is more volatile. Uh, simply to get the average, I add up all the returns and divide by n. So if I have four returns, I add them all up and divide by four to get the average. And the variance is the uh, sum of the square deviations divided by t minus one observations. So let's take a look at it for uh, just one of them. Let's do uh, super tech add up. So uh, it's basically a six-step process. We want to, uh, a five-step process, I'm sorry, with six steps. The first thing we're going to do is change all of our percentages to decimals. So make sure you do that. Work in decimals. Make yourself a note of that. Uh, so we're going to change the minus 20% to minus 0.2, the 50% to 0.5, the 30% to 0.3, and the 10% to 0 0.1. So step zero, change everything to decimals. Step one, add up all the returns and calculate the average. Okay, so I'm going to add the four returns up and get 0.7 and divide by four, and I get an average of 0.175. Step number one, uh, calculate the average return. <clears throat> step number two, calculate the deviation. Take the actual minus the average, and then watch your sign and calculate the deviation. So it's column one minus column two in this case. And just be careful, watch your sign. So minus 0 0.2 minus 0 0.175 is minus 0 0.375. 0 0.5 minus 0 0.175 is 0 0.325 and so on down the column. Uh, you can do the math. Just be careful of your sign. Note that your sum of the deviations, when I add down that column, should be zero. So if I've done my math max correctly, the sum of my deviations should be equal to zero. <clears throat> Step number two, calculate deviation. Step number three, square the deviations to eliminate the negatives and uh, sum those square deviations up. So step number three, I'm going to take um, minus 0.375 and square it, uh, 0.325 and square it, 0.125 and square it, and so on. And notice on the right, on the far right column in these uh, square deviations, I get very large number of decimal places. So six or eight decimal places uh, is a good place to be. And add all those up. So sum those square deviations, and that is step number three to, toward calculating the variance and then finally standard deviation. So for super tech variance, I'll take the sum of the square deviations, uh, 0.2675, and I'll divide that by t minus one observation. So if we have four observations, I'm going to divide that by three since it's a small sample, and I get a, um, a variance of 0.0892.
0.0892, and then to get standard deviation, I get uh, the square root of 0.0892, 29.87%. Uh, so there you have it. Uh, there, that indicates to us that super tech is a highly volatile investment, it has a high standard deviation, high variance, higher than hyperdrive. You notice we did the same calculations for hyperdrive. And um, super tech in this case has the high standard deviation, is more volatile. Remember in some of your statistics classes that if you know the mean or average and you know the standard deviation, you can ca calculate plus or minus one standard deviation. And uh, if, the, uh, if you have a large number of um, observations, and the larger the number of observations, the more the observation tends to look like a bell curve. And once it does, once it does you have a, uh, a variance and a standard deviation that you can do some um, projections with. So uh, plus or minus one standard deviation of the mean, an outcome in the future will fall within plus or minus one standard deviation 66 or 68% of the time, depending on your statistics book. Uh, plus or minus two standard deviations from the mean, 95% chance that future observations will fall, plus or minus two standard deviations. And plus or minus three standard deviations from the mean, 99% uh, chance that an outcome in the future will fall within three standard deviations of the mean. So lesson number two in uh, variability, in lessons from market history, the, the uh, reward for bearing risk is large. Bearing risk is handsomely rewarded, but in a given year, there's a significant chance of a dramatic change in value. So uh, high risk, high return is one thing we have learned from this chapter. Uh, example 12.3, we're going to use some of these statistical processes to make some decisions uh, on how likely you are to lose or gain money. Gross stocks are generally small company stocks. Are they a good investment for widows and orphans, this example asks. Uh, the average return we know on small company stocks, 17.1%. Uh, uh, average standard deviation, 33 and a third percent. So they're highly volatile. Uh, we know that uh, plus or minus one standard deviation from the mean, about 66 to 68% of future returns will fall plus or minus one standard deviation from the mean. So uh, returns will be uh, between minus 15.8% and plus 50.8% uh, in two out of every three years, or two-thirds at a time. Uh, one out of every three years, they'll fall below minus 15.8 or almost minus 16% or above 50.8%, almost 51%. Again, very volatile. Is this a good investment for widows and orphans? So we can say probably not. If you cannot afford the risk of taking a drop of something like a negative 16%, it's wonderful in a year when it goes up 50, 40, or 50%, but in this case, uh, probably not well suited toward uh, those who cannot afford the risk, like widows and orphans. So you can see that uh, using statistics can help us make good decisions in our investing lives.